8 to Friday 6 a.m. Central Time. On Saturday is going to be 8 a.m. Central Time. And on Sunday is going to be 2 p.m. Central Time. I want you to register. You're going to see an information right now. Make sure that you register and join us in the next session. I look forward to having a great time with you. As the Lord is speaking to us, the language you will understand. God bless you. Enjoy the best of your day. Hello, I am Reverend Shola Baola. I want to specially invite you to an ongoing annual program that we are having now. We target what hope is using 30 minutes for 30 days to load into our spirit man the word of God as we prepare for the year ahead of us. So I want you to join us for this year's edition. It's going to hold every Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. Central Time. On Saturday, it's going to be 8 a.m. Central Time. And on Sunday, it's going to be 2 p.m. Central Time. I want you to register. You're going to see an information right now. Make sure that you register and join us in the next session. I look forward to having a great time with you as the Lord is speaking to us the language you will understand. God bless you. Enjoy the best of your day. Hello, I am Reverend Shola Baola. I want to specially invite you to an ongoing annual program that we are having now. We target what hub is using 30 minutes for 30 days to load into our spirit man the word of God as we prepare for the year ahead of us. So I want you to join us for this year's edition. It's going to hold every Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. Central Time. On Saturday, it's going to be 8 a.m. Central Time. And on Sunday, it's going to be 2 p.m. Central Time. I want you to register. You're going to see an information right now. Make sure that you register and join us in the next session. I look forward to having a great time with you as the Lord is speaking to us. Forevermore, we thank God for his faithfulness. It's my pleasure to come on our way again to this morning. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for the privilege given to us to come by the blood of Jesus to your presence. Thank you for life, for light that we enjoy in your presence. We ask as we come praying this morning, we breathe upon us the bread of life to the glory of your name. We thank you for the moment of your spirit that is strong here this morning. We bless your name. We honor you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure one more time to come on our way this morning. We thank God for his faithfulness. Every time we come like this, God has helped us. And we must be grateful for what he has done and is able to do over and over. Amen and amen. I hope you are hearing me at home. Let me show you are hearing me. Do you hear me? All right. Praise God. All right, so one more time, this is Word Hope. God has been faithful, speaking to us a different, I mean, the language we will understand. And uh, Word Hope this year is very peculiar because God is dealing with, you know, um, um, definition of life, explaining life to us, bringing life to perspective to us um, so that we can have practical wisdom for living to the intent that we can manifest Jesus. That is what this year's edition is all about. And God has been speaking speaking to us different languages i mean different words the same language we can understand and we are grateful to god for what he has done amen and amen this morning we're going to continue the series we have the series that we have um hopefully we can run it off this morning and that is talking about life ingredients and practices for that are needed for effective living okay life ingredients and practices that are daily needed and that's what is a very um, powerful word to put attention to the things that we have to put attention to on daily basis have established for us that what makes a man to be different is what is doing consistently that is where the difference is what a man keeps doing consistently goes a long way to determine what that guide is going to become in life. If you are not doing something consistently and deliberately, then there is not going to be the kind of results that you want in life. So 
we've established that and i've said it over and over when you see a man that is making any um success or is making headwind in anything not just must you be excited about his results you must also be curious enough to know what are his daily practices don't respect too much anybody that is not doing anything consistently to achieve the kind of result that you want in life because he doesn't have a base that is going to sustain what is happening in the future so are you following me now so it's not just important that you are having the result now your 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 purpose is to the intent that in the future you can maintain what you are having that is the whole essence of it you want to maintain what you are having and one major thing that is responsible for maintaining whatever thing you have in life is consistency that you put to something especially on daily basis so how that has place also for life ingredients i said number one you must breathe have the breath of god we've established that number two the mercies of god Number three, the strength of God. Number four, the provisions of God. Number five, you must have daily additions. Okay. You must have something added to your life on daily basis. And I can't stress that enough. That must be your goal. Something must be adding to your life. You know, knowledge being added to you. Financially, something is added. Growth is being added and stuff like that. So the next point is that you must have daily practice and you must have daily help that is another ingredient you need in life daily help number seven you need um daily experience of as pouring of his love you must be able to see god pouring his love upon you every time number eight you must have daily protection okay that's another ingredient you need in life daily justice you must have it god justify bringing justice to you on daily basis number ten um, which is where, which I believe that is where we stopped. No, no. Then we have daily prosperity. Number eleven, we have daily health, and number twelve. That is where we stopped yesterday. Daily expectations. You must have daily expectations in life. You must trust the Lord and expect something good to happen to you on daily basis. You must trust the Lord to do something in your life. You know, you must just expect that that day is going to be good. It doesn't matter how it was at the time you are sleeping, by the time you are waking up, you must understand that you must have that expectation that something great is going to happen to you over and over. You're blessed with that. Okay, so let's let's continue today by looking at daily practices. Daily practices. What are the things that you must do on daily basis? Okay, this is key. I want us to turn our Bibles to um, Daniel chapter 11 verse 30. We're going to read Daniel chapter 11, verse 30. Then we're going to read that in the Living Bible. Now, Daniel chapter 11, verse 30. Um, the Living Bible. Okay, okay, look at this. It said, from ships from, from Cyrus, Cyprus, shall come against him therefore he shall be grieved and be turned in rage against the holy covenant and do damage so he shall return and show regard for those who forsake the holy covenant are you sure this is okay so let me pull it um daniel chapter 11 verse 30 let me show for i'm reading uh okay so we continue say daniel chapter 11 verse 30 living bible okay so i continue uh, okay let me move to the second one verse 31 the new living translation let me see new living translation verse 31 is harming we take over the temple fortress pollute the this, this sanctuary, put a stop to the daily sacrifice. I want you to see that. This is one of the attack of the devil. He wants to put a stop to daily sacrifices. Do you see that? He said, it's harming we take over the temple fortress. Okay. Pollute the sanctuary. Put a stop to the daily sacrifices and set up sacrilege object that causes desecration so 
The secretion will not happen until you stop, until daily sacrifices are stopped. Are you seeing that now? You, the life of a man will not start desecrating or disintegrating until he stops doing some certain things that are positive on daily basis. If the devil can stop you from doing something that are sacrifices, things that are pure on daily basis, if the devil can you know, can achieve doing that, he will, he will soon you know, you know, destroy the life of that person. So that is what we are seeing there. Look at... Um, Chapter 12, Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, the same New Living Translation. He said, from the time the daily sacrifice is stopped and the sacrilege object that causes desecration is set up to the worship to be worshipped, that will be 1290 12, 12, I mean, 1, days. Do you see that? So there is a time that the devil will work so hard to stop what somebody is doing on daily basis. And you must be sure, you must be careful that the devil does not achieve that in your life. If the devil achieves that, then he, 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 he will destroy whatever thing that person is building. That is what we are seeing now. So what are those daily practices, daily sacrifices that you must put in place? Number one, daily fellowship with the Lord. That's the sacrifice that must be. Okay? Daily sacrifices with the Lord. When we are talking about that, we are talking about daily, you know, reading of the word of god daily interaction and that is what i used it daily interaction with the word of god you must have it con continuously consistently daily interaction with the word of god okay number two you must have praise your praise must come to the lord on daily basis never let that be a day in your life that you will not praise god when you wake up in the morning have the habit that the first thing you are going to say is thank you jesus okay that's the law of first i taught that last year okay that's the law, law of law of first let the first word that is going to come before you in your word is the word that praise the lord okay regardless of whatever thing that happens make sure that you praise god on daily basis he said he said he said his praise shall continually be in my mouth I will praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Let it be your habit that the praise of God is continually in your mouth. Regardless of what the enemy is doing, always learn how to praise God. Is somebody following me now? Never let there be a day in your life that will come that you will not deliberately say thank you, Jesus. There's a sister in our church, you always just say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, and things like that. It's a habit that she has formed, okay? And we have a couple of them like that in church. Let, let, be, let it be your practice, daily thanksgiving, daily praise unto our God, okay? The third one is daily prayer, okay? The Bible says they offer prayer unto the Lord on daily basis. Let, let it be your exercise that you are praising God daily, um, on daily basis, and on that on that that the, the, on that prayer a daily prayer, I will put there, you know, daily confession of the word of God as part of that prayer. Under that, daily confession of the word of God and daily intercession. It's not just important to pray. Ensure that on daily basis you intercede for somebody. There is somebody that could have been better. There is somebody that no matter how you look at your life. There's somebody that quote and unquote you are better off. That it will take your, your passion to pray, Lord, make this person to be better too. Are you following me now? So there will be somebody in your life that needs your prayer. Please understand that. We, it, life is connected. Never let there be a day in your life. Make it as part of my own habit. One of, one of them I'm going to form again. Okay, That you will ensure that you intercede for somebody. Okay, if if it ever cross anybody crosses your mind, okay, and your mind keeps going there, and that's the good way for you to know that God wants you to say a word of prayer for that person. You don't need to be an intercessor to do this now. Oh, I'm not an intercessor. Who says you are not an intercessor? Every believer is an intercessor for the first instance. Okay, so you've got to if you're going to if you're not going to build your 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 your, your life. Your Christian experience alive, uh, 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 your Christian experience around your needs alone, you must cultivate the habit of intercession. 
You pray for your, your spouse. You pray for your children. But now extend it to people that are not even biologically connected to you. That is, the, oh, that is this major essence of, of being a believer. If somebody bless what I share with us. Make it a habit. A habit of praising God. Of blessing God. Do you understand? Look at Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Next slide. Now this is New English translation. It said, when Daniel realized that a written, a, a written decree had been issued, what did he do? He entered his home. When the windows, where the windows in his upper room opened towards Jerusalem. And what does it what did he do? Three times, everybody, three times what? Daily he was kneeling and offering prayers and thanks to his God, just as he had been accustomed to do previously, just like he had been accustomed. Don't forget, this man was in the marketplace. Okay. So you don't have an excuse. Oh, I would have done better not because I'm in the marketplace and the rest of that. You are in the marketplace, okay? You, I, you have to know this. You can do it. He was in the market, a very busy man, attending to the president of the nation. And yet he could cultivate the habit of praying. The Bible says that he knelt down three times in a day towards Jerusalem as he had been accustomed. He has built a, a habit around it. Are you blessed? You can do this. A time you are going to just take a, a moment out to just pray in the spirit. Two minutes, five minutes. Cultivate that habit on daily basis. You become what you keep doing continuously. You have results from what you keep doing continuously. When people say, ah, it just happened, I don't even know what, what happened. Don't take that bit. Is it that truly they don't know how it happened, there is no business for it, that thing just came. It is visitation. Anything that you cannot trace to what you have been doing consistently before it happens is a, is a visitor. It's just passing. Believe me, you can hold it. But when you hear people say, boom, it happened like that. Uh -uh. Go and ask for what they've been doing for the past 10 years. 20 years. Then you are going to see that nothing just happened. I will bless you what I'm sharing with you. Number two, daily renewal of your mind. You need to renew your mind daily. Okay? Renew your mind daily. We know that scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Let's look at that. 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4, verse 19. The that, that should be amplified version. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Amplified. Verse 16 says, Therefore, we do not become discouraged, spiritless, disappointed, or afraid, though our outer self is progressively wasting away. Yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day by day. Our, our inner self is what? Is being progressively renewed day by day. Cultivate the habit of renewing your mind every day. And let me tell you one major way you can renew your mind. Practice daily meditation. Meditation will save your mind away what is not of God and we put an, an, an root in you what is right. Meditation. Pondering on what must happen. Pondering on, on, on the word of God until it has a root in you to become your experience. Worrying is pondering upon the word of the devil until it has a root in you to produce its own result. But meditation is pondering upon the word of God, upon the possibilities of God, until you have the kind of result that you want in life. So meditate daily. Look at, look at Psalms 1, verse 1 and 2. We know that bless the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates. Where? Day and night. He meditates day and night. So learn to take the scripture, a phrase of the scripture, Put it upon your spirit, man, for a week. Okay? Put it upon your heart for a week. Take the scripture. Okay? Take a phrase that you had. For instance, so many, I mean, some, some weeks ago I said, where is money? And the rest said that. 
That's the word that comes from the womb of the spirit. That take your time to meditate upon it over and over. Make your time to, to meditate upon until you have the kind of result you want. You understand? That is how we are going to have the result. Daily renewal of your mind. Very important. Number three, be a blessing to a believer daily. Cultivate the habit of being a blessing to somebody on daily basis. In the place of prayer, okay, in checking upon them, a text we do. Do you understand the point now? A text we do. Just sometimes if you see somebody that posts something on the, maybe you just have a break and you see somebody posting something and the rest of that. A little bit of like is going to make that person smile. Just like or comment, whatever thing you're going to do, that is checking on somebody. That is making somebody, being a blessing to somebody. Or God is instructing you specifically. Why can't you buy so so for so so person and the rest of that? Being a blessing. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 and 13 said, Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil act of unbelief in the pattern from the living God. Say, but exhort one another. How? Daily. Exhort one another. How? Daily. Exhort one another. How will you exhort one another? Do it on daily basis. He said, while it is today, do it. Don't postpone it. Oh, I will, I will give that person tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to, maybe he's, he's not going to need it. Sometimes, reach out to people. Do you mind having this? They can tell you, oh, so I'm thank you. Thank you so much. I'm blessed. Good. At least you have done your part. I posted something on my on my page. Well, the, the video clips I put out every week. I said, let 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 your your expression of love let it be an answer to somebody's prayer. Let it be the reason why somebody st we still know that he has faith. The expression of love you give. Let it, let it, let it, let, let it be what somebody will look at and say, oh, 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 my prayer is answered. Because you express love to somebody. I hope you are blessed. Do that on daily basis. Do you hear that? On daily basis. Very important. Number four, okay, daily representation of Jesus. You represent Jesus anywhere you find yourself on daily basis. Acts chapter 17 verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentiles worshippers and in the marketplace where daily with those who happen to be there. All of you that were in marketplace, I hope you are hearing me. You work in the hospital, you work in the in the in the in your place of work, organization, different places where you work. Those are your marketplaces. Okay, make sure that you represent Jesus on daily basis. On daily basis, somebody you know sent a testimony to me of some place of work. The person, I mean, did this uh, a, 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 a colleague misbehaved, and she would have just you know just giving it back to her you know but she just kept her calm and she kept i mean she kept kind and she let her go only for her to discover that the lady said oh no no i like i like your mind uh you 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 you, you taught me that you were a real christian because of what i did for you months ago i discovered you didn't react to it and the rest of that and she was so excited about that i said praise god now that is representing jesus you do it directly or him directly let somebody because some people, see, like I told you something that every believer, you have something to offer. One day, somebody will need what you carry. By the time they need it, don't let your, your, your action and reaction, don't let it stop people from asking, asking for it in days to come. Somebody understanding me? Don't let what you are doing today, let somebody say down there is no God that rules. Everybody is the same. There are a lot of people that have that are misrepresenting Jesus. That's why they don't respect us as believers. But be the person that we say, "Oh, I've met many Christians, but you are different." Under normal circumstances, it shouldn't be. All of us must be the same. Must be must be different. But then it's not. We, it is what it is. But be the reason why somebody will say that uh, 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 Christianity is serious. So they present Jesus anywhere you find yourself. As a child, represent Jesus. As a student, represent Jesus. In your place of work, represent Jesus. Don't let your emotion take you over. What you are going through on daily basis, don't let it overpower you from representing Jesus. The life that I live is the life of Jesus, we have said. 
And that must empower us. Number five, fear the Lord daily. Fear the Lord. How? Fear Him daily. Fear Him daily. Okay? Look at um, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 17, very quickly. Proverbs. Okay, look at it. It said, Do not let your heart envy, envy sinners who live godless life and have no hope of salvation, but continue to live in the reverent worship of the Lord day by day. Continue to live in the fear of the Lord. How? Day by day. Let the fear of the Lord grip your heart. It will, the fear of the Lord will keep your conscience alive. Are you following me? The, the fear of the Lord keeps your conscience alive. When there is no fear of the Lord in your heart, then the conscience is dying gradually. Fear the Lord day by day. Fear Him day by day. Fear Him. Let the fear of the Lord propel you. The Bible says that, it said, um, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, he said, the love of the Lord constrains us. That love is that is that abiding fear of the Lord in our heart. It constrains or determines what we reach out to, what we are not going to do. All things are lawful unto me, not all things are expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought to the power of any. In 2024, as you enter into that year, let the fear of the Lord, let it propel your action. Let it determine what you are doing. And it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. The Bible talks about the spirit of the fear of the Lord. May you have the spirit of the fear of the Lord. May that power your life on daily basis in the name of Jesus. Number six, daily watch over wisdom. Romans, I mean, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. Okay, the Bible says that blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gate. To watch over wisdom means that you are expecting wisdom to come. Okay. You are expecting to, to let what you are going to do, your action, be ruled by the watch of, by, the, by the force of wisdom. He watches it at the gate of wisdom on daily basis, waiting at the post of my door. The post. Have you ever had somebody posted something? You are expecting him to post something into your spirit before you do it. Jesus, they asked him a question, who was the one that was wrong? That, that we, uh, he said, said this woman will cut her at the, at the act of adultery. What do we do? The Bible said that Jesus started writing on the floor. Writing, what was he doing? What was he writing on the floor? The Bible did not talk about it. He was just trying to mark time. Spirit of wisdom. What do we tell these guys now? And then he lifted up. He says, if every, anybody has ever committed, let him be the first person to cast the stone. The Bible said all of them started living from the oldest to the youngest. Are you seeing that? So he watched at the gate of wisdom every time. If you watch at the gate of wisdom, people will not catch words into your mouth. When you want to say it the way your emotion wants to, but you watch, you, you, held your, you, you hold yourself back to watch, to watch with the Holy Ghost. How do I present it? Sometimes you know what to say, but you don't know how to say it. Is somebody blessed? Sometimes you know what to say, but you don't know how to say so it's not just important you know what to say. You must know how to say it. It's not just important you have an answer. If you are writing an essay now, you know they have told you, write an essay about this. So you know what to say. But how do you start? What words do you use to express what is in your mind? That is watching by, by wisdom. All of you will write the same thing, but eventually they are going to give somebody 100%. They will give somebody 98%. What is the difference between the two? Okay. Both of you are saying the same thing, but you are saying it different ways. Are you blessed? This is how you are going to get creative when you learn to watch at the gate of wisdom every day. All of you that you have your business, okay, so competitive, you must always, always watch at the, at the doorpost of wisdom. Wisdom. Only goes, how else do I do this business? How else do I make this bread? How else do I attend to these people? How else do I attend to my customers? How else do I present this thing? It must be in your mind. When you watch over wisdom, it's going to tell you what to do. High wisdom. I will make the, the years of your day. I will make it to be lengthy. I will make it to be productive. That is Proverbs chapter 9 verse 11. The Living Bible. I won't forget that because I always remember 9-11. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 11. The Living Bible. I like it. 
So I'm giving you a quote today. If you don't forget, if you forget everything, don't forget 9 level. Proverbs 9 level. Is somebody blessed? High wisdom. This is what wisdom does. It, it makes the hours of your day how more productive. More productive. It makes it more, more profitable. Yes. It makes it more profitable. So your day, your day becomes more the hours, each hour becomes more profitable because you watch with on with wisdom. And then the years of your life will now be more fruitful. That is what wisdom does for us. So watch at that gate every time. Number seven, daily leading of the Holy Ghost. Daily living, daily leading of the Spirit. The book of Numbers. Chapter 9, verse, verse 19. The book of, no, the book of Nehemiah. I beg your pardon. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 19, the Living Bible. The Living Bible says, But in your great mercy, you didn't abandon them to die in the wilderness. Now look at this. The pillar of cloud led them forward out day by day. The representation of the pillar of cloud is the leading of the Holy Ghost. It leads them day by day. It leads them day by day. And the pillar of, of fire showed them the way throughout the night. So trust the Lord for the leading of the Spirit through your regenerated mind. Even if it's what you have been, you have known how to do over and over, learn occasionally to run it by the Holy Ghost again. Is this still the way to keep doing it? The leading of the Spirit. Okay. Number eight. Number eight. Exercise daily. Do an exercise on daily basis. Do your exercise on daily basis. Praise God. What are those exercises? Look at the next slide. Number one, exercise your body daily. The Bible talks about the, that, the, the, that, uh, uh, that, that prof, uh, the, the daily, uh, bodily exercise. Beg your pardon. Bodily exercise profited, daily, uh, profited little, but that, that little too is important. Move your body daily. Okay? Especially for those of you that you walk, you walk sitting down. Okay? Learn to stand up. The, the, all, the, all the watches, the smart watch helps you to know that you have already sat down for a while. Okay, move that body around. Okay, jump around your house, you know, and things like that. As little as that is doing something to your body. You don't want to develop. No, let me, let me mind my business. So, I hope this is blessing you. Move that body daily. Move it, move it, move it around. Move your body. Move. Move your body. Okay, your body must keep cooperating to your spirit for you to perform on the heart. If your body is not cooperating again, no matter how strong the spirit is going to, you, you, the person is ready to go. Are you blessed? Number two, under that is exercise authority daily. Exercise your authority on daily basis. The scripture is there. I'm not going into that, but you have to read that. Luke chapter 10, verse, 11, verse 19, Amplified Classics is there. You exercise your authority. Give them authority over stink and, and Scorpio. When you see a devil, exercise your authority. Don't be panicking. But for, for take authority over that. If you are going to call me, if you are going to call your pastor, okay, to, to agree with you, you first of all, use your hand. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over it. Your thought, your thought is going around to do, to do nonsense. Take authority over that devil. You just discover a, a pain in your body. Even if you know you strain it yourself consciously. See, take authority over that pain. Must not enter your body. So exercise your authority on daily basis. Over your territory. Exercise your, your authority. Number three, exercise your kingdom life. Okay? The life that you have in Christ. Okay, exercise it. Let people know that we believe. I've said that. Number four, exercise your godliness. The Bible talks about godliness. He said you must exercise yourself unto godliness. In other words, continue to do what is going to increase your godliness. How to live in a godly way. Continue to do it. Continue to open yourself to what is going to increase your godly living. That is what it means. Number five, exercise self-control. Exercise self-control. I can teach on self-control entirely. Okay? Maybe I'm going to get there this I don't know. But the truth of the matter is this. No matter how strong a man is, in fact, the stronger you are in life, the more self-controlled you must be. 
okay that's why you see people just run their mouth anytime they just speak the way they want to they allow you the emotion to take them over because of what they cannot exercise self-control you know yesterday something happened and she didn't know i went to you know i went to my my first daughter's school to go and pick her no, only for me to get there before she sends me and say I will not be I will not be around until another one hour. Stay. Ah! I wanted to give her another word like that. I've been composing that text. I wanted to give it to her. Ah! And in my heart, I said, no, don't say it. You will break her spirit. Sincerely. And I came. So yes, when she was coming to Nika, when after when I went to pick her eventually, hey, how are you? That that was your day. It's as if I should give her this. You know that you are wasting my energy, wasting my but you are going to break her spirit. Are you seeing that now? Because words are powerful. There are people today, 20 years what the word somebody said to them 20 years ago, 15 years ago, they are still kind it to tomorrow. Because listen, the reason why you have to exercise self-control that eh, things most of the time, things are not exactly the way they appear at the first instance. Never forget what I said now. Things are not exactly the way they appear at the first instance. It's either it's, it's, it's presenting itself in a deceitful way or your perception is wrong because of your present situation or your past experiences. So it will take diligent self-control to wait to examine and re-examine before you will make a final conclusion. somebody blessed you have to let this one be at the back of your mind there are there are there are families today that have been destroyed couples today that have destroyed themselves destroyed trust in themselves because they just speak the way things are to them no how who told you you are right who told you what is presenting itself to you is right you never can say until you are you, you put self-control to be sure that you understand what you are dealing with perfectly or to a very large extent hope you are blessed very important okay i'm giving us 10 points so you know i'm riding off two more points okay number nine daily walk daily walk daily walk Exodus, let's read that one Exodus chapter 20 verse 9 the last two i'm going to say let me tell us this as we as they are getting that scripture for me the last two i'm going to make mention right now okay and maybe i should just did with both of them the, um, the same way Number nine, daily work. Number 10, daily learning. These two points, listen to it very carefully. These two points, the day you stop doing them, as Alailu has come in, you know what, the, the depth is coming in gradually. The day a man stops learning or he stops working, he's getting ready to go and meet his, his, his ancestors. So what it means is the, the day you stop working, and learning at the age of 35, you are getting ready to go and meet your, your well, I don't think your father must have been there by that time because my children are 35, I'm CA. Praise God forevermore. Are you blessed when I'm sharing with you? A lot, this is the reality of our lives. The day you stop working, the day you stop learning, then you are, you are, you, that person is on the way. Look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 9. The Living Bible, quickly. Six days a week are for your daily duties and your regular work. Even the seventh one, he said you should rest. You still know you have to still rest actively. Are we hearing me now? This is key. Daily work. I'm not saying daily job. I'm not saying we do job daily, but work daily. In your work daily, it means that you are depositing something into your destiny assignment on daily basis. Something that is going to make for your life. Something you will like to see yourself in days to come. You must do something about it on daily basis. I'm not just saying going to work or going to do your job. The work of your destiny. Do something in that regard on daily basis. Even if it's going to be 5 minutes, 10 minutes, you must do something in the, in the direction of your destiny. On daily basis. And learn. I saw a short clip of a man. 93 or 96 year. 90 something year. 90 something year old. 90 something year old. Okay. I saw the clip. Okay. It, that, the, 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 that man was. was um, 
he was interviewed by um Pastor Pedro de my or my this wife. And they asked the man, he said, Sir, I learned that at your age I'm still working. The man said, I'm still working. He said, I work 8 to 11 p.m. 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day except Christmas. The man said, At your he said, Sir, at your age, he said, Call me nine o'clock. I'm here. I'm here in my office. If anybody has seen it, anybody has seen that that clip, okay. If you've seen it, maybe if I see, if you get it, just uh, uh, let me have it. I'm going to share it with you. Ninety something. The guy said, he said the day man and the man made that statement. He said the day man stopped working, it says he started dying gradually. Why do you think that grandma is still going to shop by this time? Is it because of what is going to make there? No. The devil knows that if it is work, she won't keep my mom. That's why she made her have whatever she had because the one is still work. We are going to see a 33 year old man that is sitting down on Netflix. All the all the series is doing. Say, I cannot kill myself. You are killing yourself already. All the series is working. All the series. Netflix is just sitting there. You will sleep on it. You will wake up. If if he has he has played it for 45 minutes, it you still revive, you still rewind it again. What is what they are doing you already? Daily work, daily learning. That's the next one. Look at the town. I saw this today and it blessed me. I'm running off now. It's taking forever. Okay, just bear with me. God has banded both of us together. Now look at Deuteronomy chapter seventeen verse nineteen. Look at New Living Translation. He must always keep that copy with him and read it. How daily? How must he read it? Read it daily, as long as he lives. Me call. I didn't write it. The scripture says it. Keep the copy with him and read it how daily as long as he lives he said that the way we learn he said that way he will learn do you see that did i write it i didn't write it the scripture says that way he will learn learn to fear the lord is god by obeying his times but then he will learn many things that is where he's going to learn mathematics that's going to learn life that's going to learn business that's going to learn to keep learning as what it means, you are most many other person that I know. This man at the age of, of 50, 50, 56 or 50 something, he still go to library. I still don't know how that man is doing it. I don't know. He's still going to library. You keep learning. Philippians chapter 4 verse 9, amplified version. Look at it. So you ran off today. The last scripture for today. Philippians chapter 4 verse 9, amplified quickly. It said the things, look at this scripture, the things which you have learned and received and had and seen in me practice these things how in daily life practice these things in daily life what you have read for me on daily basis practices on daily basis it is then the god who is the source of peace and well-being will be with you i hope you are blessed today you see people that are not coming for meetings like this not no no source they cannot say this is what is sourcing this is the source of whatever thing they are doing that person is dying that don't respect them they may have result today but that result is fading away it's a matter of time a man must have where he's feeding from a man must have something that is 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 is, is making because every time you open yourself to learning two things are happening you are supplied the holy ghost is going to do two things for you we teach you all things it will remind you of all things if you don't put something into your mind, if it does, it has not taught you anything, what it will remind you of? That means that the work of the Holy Ghost in your life will not be complete if you don't learn. So I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you inheritance among the saints. In the name of Jesus, that this word we have, we, we give you strength, we give you hope now and in the future. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Are you blessed who came this morning? Amen and amen. Let me know how this word has blessed you, okay? We meet in the evening. Today is our midweek service. We meet for Word Alive. It's going to be a powerful time in this presence. 6.30 p.m. Central time, we're going to be there. But tomorrow, by this case, we're going to continue Word Up again. 6 a.m. Central time. God bless you, and you're the best of your day in Jesus' name. Amen. amen.